Good afternoon. Uh, I hope that you can hear me clearly, so uh, please use uh, the chat uh, feature and uh, let us know if you can hear me clearly so that we can take care of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a great, great pleasure um, to be able to share with you some of the key findings of uh, a user study that we recently conducted. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, on, turn off the camera so that the focus is on the slides and then I can turn it on again when uh, we are ready for questions. Uh, so before, I, I, I imagine um, you all know about archive, but if you don't mind, I'm just going to take a few minutes to um, give you a very quick overview of archive. Okay, let's see. Currently, archive has 1.2 million uh, papers related to physics, mathematics, computer science, and quantitative biology. As you can see from the numbers, uh, new submissions are growing, downloads are growing. Uh, actually, 2016, we are seeing yet uh, even higher numbers. Now we are getting close to 600 papers a day. Uh, archive started in uh, physics, especially high energy physics, but you can see that uh, it's really spreading rather rapidly to other disciplines, especially to mathematics and computer science. Uh, this is yet another uh, slide that shows you the increasing uptake of archive. Archive is by all means a global database by not only its content, but also by use. The slides show you the use coming from uh, various countries. And you would see that although it's run from the US, from Cornell University Library, US academic institutions represent only 25% of the institutional users. Archive is a pretty transparent uh, governance model. For instance, uh, we do have budgets uh, available. Uh, including in directs, it's about $1 million to run archive, and that the funds are coming from 190 member institutions, uh, Simons Foundations and Cornell University. Uh, it has a business model. Open access systems are free to use, but they do cost money. And that actually one of my uh, responsibilities as a program director is to raise funds and to make sure that uh, we can sustain archive. Here's the governance model. Uh, we have two advisor groups, Scientific One focusing on advising us on intellectual oversight and then member uh, advisory board composed of representatives from libraries. This is uh, in a nutshell, just to show you how we are uh, staffed. We have 7.7, um, close to eight FTE. Uh, of course, we have uh, uh, contributions from the Scientific Advisory Board, especially Paul Ginsberg, and uh, 150 moderators, which I will talk about moderators when I am presenting the findings. Uh, I, I tried to give you a very quick uh, overview, but uh, if you're interested in kind of archives background, I highly recommend that you look at this page. And uh, archive is celebrating its 25th anniversary in August. And as a part of uh, our celebration, uh, last year we have initiated a review of the service from many perspectives, from vision, technology, user support. And as a part of this process, we uh, ran a survey in April uh, and that basically users were invited to respond uh, via the web page. And we were delighted to get uh, 36,000 responses in, uh, you know, in 15 days or so. That was quite remarkable. Uh, we got responses from all around the world. Again, I'm very proud that, uh, you know, it's not only U.S. where the responses are coming from. This shows you the uh, voices we from world scientific community and also uh, various age groups 
and subject area interests and age groups, although uh, almost 68% of the respondents were younger than 39 years old. So let me share with you the key findings. I will go um, fast, hoping that uh, you will ask me questions at the end and make comments about the findings. And also my last slide is a citation. Uh, there's an article that actually a paper that we posted on archive with much more detailed uh, report. It's, it's a much more detailed report with findings. So first of all, we were delighted, delighted to hear that uh, a vast majority of the users are happy with archive uh, and that they really want us to stick to the core mission. And the core mission of archive is that it's seen as a scientific communication venue for scientists from all around the world to post their papers as soon as they are ready to present the findings of their research. And that actually has been coexisting with formal publishing. Although more and more we are seeing archive as a final destination, but very often papers after submitted to archive are also um, published in formal papers. But uh, as you can imagine, sometimes it takes, you know, six months to three years to publish a paper. Whereas with archive, the minute uh, the paper is ready, scientists are able to post it on archive to share their findings, to claim ownership of ideas, and also to encourage uh, building on each other's findings. And uh, one of the recommendations was, uh, you know, find more partners, collaborate, and that, uh, you know, have other related services also help build new features for archive. I would say at the top of uh, our wish list from users' perspective is improving the search functionality. And you wouldn't believe how many comments we had about author name disambiguation. I was quite impressed, even references to ORCID, which indicates that uh, scientists are very aware of uh, uh, this new emerging uh, standard. Uh, actually, let me note that there were 17 multiple choice questions and uh, eight open-ended. Open-ended questions we received uh, from 800 to 3,300 response for each open-ended questions. We had actually close to 23,000 open-ended questions to analyze. And it was a very much team approach. Five of us took almost two months in analyzing the open access, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, open-ended uh, questions. Uh, key findings, wish list. The second one, as you can see, is providing better support for submitting and linking various materials related to the papers. And I want to, I want to note one thing here. Uh, those uh, users who suggested the link rather than having them also, uh, uh, having them also stored on archive commented that they were worried about uh, bit rot, that they were worried about also link rot, meaning links disappearing. In other words, if there's research data associated with a paper, and if they add the link uh, to the research data, there were concerns that uh, not every other service was as reliable as archive, because at least from their perspective, archive has been serving their needs for 25 years, and they know that the paper they put uh, Cornell is committed to make sure that it will be around for future generations. Continue with key findings. Um, we asked them questions about new services, uh, and there is great interest in putting direct links to papers in the references. Uh, and actually, I can just imagine Again, we will be uh, probably dealing with uh, link rot, the URLs changing. Uh, but still, uh, users love to see not only the papers, but uh, easy access to underlying research. And of course, they're interested in uh, tools to be able to export formats uh, for bibliographic, uh, their 
their bibliographies and for their footnotes. Uh, I, you, some of you may know, but Archive is a moderated repository. Uh, unlike institution repositories where uh, uh, scientists, faculty, students post their papers uh, without much moderation or quality control, uh, with Archive, each paper goes through a very, very quick review. I would by no means call it peer review. It's just uh, a quick look to make sure that the article is indeed of scientific quality. There are references, citations, tables. It's formatted correctly, and it is uh, submitted to the right uh, subject category. Uh, this diagram just shows you the workflow. The papers are submitted, and we have uh, three full-time equivalent uh, user support staff who, who oversee this process and they channel uh, these papers to 150 subject specialist moderators all around the world so that uh, they help us with this quick review process. Generally speaking, almost 85% of the papers are posted within a day after they are submitted. I wanted to give you this background because you will see that next slide is about quality control and moderation. We asked our users a number of questions. We said, you know, we said archive conducts quality control. We don't ex accept every paper. By the way, only maybe, you know, 10, 15% of submissions are flagged for problems. So the vast majority are just perfectly fine, but still it does take time. And you'll see from the slide that a vast majority of the users said that it was really important that we check for text overlap. You make sure that articles are uh, correctly classified. And uh, they also uh, value that uh, we are uh, doing some checks for text overlap. Uh, in other words, plagiarism. We uh, take every paper presented through a uh, application to see if there is any text overlap with whether external paper or an author's own paper, checking for text overlap. And uh, interestingly, many users also said, oh, they said, you know, we didn't know that you do such deep quality control. They want to know a little more about what we do. So that's uh, the second, uh, I would say, significant finding in this uh, quality control realm. Users want to see more information, more transparency about the moderation process. This is a really tricky one, as some of the respondents also pointed out, because quality is such a subjective concept. Also, we are trying to maintain a rather uh, efficient, cost-efficient operation, and uh, you know that's one of the reasons that it's kind of very organic and then happens fast without much paper trail of uh, you know how the review process is going. Uh, this again is another slide just to show you uh, how much interest there is in quality control. Uh, again, a vast majority of the users, uh, as you see the first bar, uh, its archive should maintain its current quality control level. Uh, we got actually thousands of responses about archive and scientific communication. Uh, some users are uh, suggesting that we become more daring, that move beyond being a, a preprint publishing platform and all advanced open access and uh, try to reduce dependence on uh, publications, on formal publications. Whereas an almost equal size group uh, emphasize that we really need to stick to the core mission Journals still have an important role, and archive needs to really focus on preprints or uh, overlay journals. And that uh, it was interesting, the theme all through was they want us to be vigilant about changes. They like archive as is. They definitely want some improvement, as I said, especially with the search interface and you know linking and being able to add uh, uh, related materials. But they are focusing on that the major 
uh, important issue for them, which is we love archive, it meets our needs, please don't make any unnecessary changes. Actually, I was almost amused to see uh, uh, reading uh, several response, several uh, respondents making very strong comments about, you know, they want archive to be a scholarly forum, just like it has been, that they don't want it to turn into a social media platform. Uh, we asked, asked actually read users about adding two features to uh, allow archive to implement or to be a part of open science network. One was adding a rating system so that uh, archives users can assess, review, and rate different articles. And the other one was adding an annotation feature uh, to be able to, uh, again, support uh, users, readers, to add comments, questions, so on and so forth. Both features, um, again, this was to our surprise, uh, split opinions, very split opinions. Uh, some value such an addition, some say it's not important or should not be doing this, but even those respondents who suggest that we add a rating system or an annotation feature they are uh, very strongly cautioning us and suggesting that we are very careful if we are going to be uh, implementing, we need to also have a quality control system, registration system. We need to worry about uh, authors, uh, uh, you know, reputation building needs and any uh, invalid comments, any vicious comments. So they were really focusing on the socio-cultural aspects of open science. Technology piece is easy, but how do you moderate? How do you uh, provide quality control? And how do you create a, a fair, objective platform? Uh, we actually were really curious to see correlations because you know, we have different age groups, nationalities, uh, experience levels of academic communities, physics, mathematics, computer science. So one of the questions or one of the uh, analysis stages we had was uh, to run cross tabs to see what kind of relations that we are seeing. To our surprise, actually, there were only two significant relationships. One was, um, one was uh, actually about the uh, number of years uh, using archive and uh, opinions about uh, adding new features or opinions about the existing features. Uh, as you can kind of see from this as an example, uh, very often users with uh, experience, let's say less than five years, and that's the actual dark color, uh, were more likely to have no opinion about new features or about existing features than uh, experienced users. Again, 11 or more years, as you would see, is the light blue. So it was an interesting trend that it looks like as users uh, spend more time in archive, they have stronger opinions about uh, the existing features or new features. And the second interest, by the way, this is only one example of uh, tech engine this applied to several other questions of uh, this sort. And the second correlation we absorbed was, we uh, actually came up with was, about the rating system. Uh, rating system, again, if you will notice from this bar chart that uh, as uh, age, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say age, actually, although there was also age correlation with this question, by the way, both age and number of years using archive experience. You do see that uh, respondents with less than five years experience using archive were more likely to be positive about uh, the rating system. And also they were uh, probably not as opposed, meaning they are claiming that's not important or should not be doing this. Uh, actually, 
I want to conclude my presentation so that we have ample time for questions. I would say this slide is very revealing. Uh, when we ask them uh, their opinion about how we should move forward, as you can see from this bar chart, a vast majority of 36,000 respondents told us that we should focus on archives' main purpose, which is to quickly make available scientific papers with a level of uh, certain level of uh, quality control. I think it's pretty revealing as we think about uh, innovation and as we think about uh, advancing science by adding new features to our systems. So um, let me actually bring myself, by the way, the last slide will be uh, uh, the article that you can find on archive. If you just go to archive.org and en enter Oya Rieger, uh, you will be able to find a pretty uh, lengthy article with detailed findings and a number of charts. And I'm going to actually turn on the camera so that uh, you can't see me when I'm answering your questions. And thank you very much for listening.